Okay, thank you, Chrissy. Well, praise God. It's a great day to come together, and, and I'm just so excited that you're all here. Let's just open up in prayer today as we get started. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the precious name of Jesus. I just thank you that your blessing is on each one of us here on campus and those online. I thank you that our hearts are ready to receive your good word. And Lord, that we know that we are more than a conqueror, invincible champions because of what Jesus has already done. We praise you, we glorify you, in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Well, again, it's just great to be here. I am so excited about the message that I have to share with you today. So if you brought a pen and paper in your Bible, you can write this down, I will not be shaken. And so, praise God, let's turn to Psalm 46. We're going to have most of the notes up there for you, but there might be a couple of more um, as I was studying last night, even this morning, just some more things came to me. But just to open up, just to get on the same page, what, why this title? What are we talking about? This is Psalm, again, 46, and verse, um, verses 1 and 2. And like I said, it should be up on the screen. But it says, God is our refuge and strength. Isn't that already good news? God is our. God is my refuge and strength. Go ahead and say that. God is my, God is my. refuge and strength. And it goes on to tell us a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we what? Will not fear. Hallelujah. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. That's quite a picture illustration, isn't it? That no matter what, I think more than once, or I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but I think we've all had some experiences where we have that feeling like the carpet or rug was pulled right out from under our feet. And so when I read that scripture, how even though this happens, the earth be removed, or this happens with this, I'm not going to be shaken. Nothing is going to shake me. I like how it says, God is my refuge. He is my strength. He is my present help in a time of trouble. And so this is just really good news, isn't it? So I don't have to, I don't have to live in that feeling of just everything is crumbling out from under me. And so just as I was thinking, well, what keeps us from having that feeling that everything is crumbling out from under me. And so these are three things that we're going to talk about. I really want to empower all of you again here on campus. Hello, everyone online. But these are three things that really stood out for me. And it's stand on truth, know truth, and speak truth. So stand on truth, know truth, and speak truth. I think what's interesting, I think every generation has had um, something so adverse. I mean, I was even thinking of um, Adam and Eve and their two children before there was bad TV and bad music. <laughs> you know, because we think, well, this is influence and this is, you know, when God created us, he created us in his image, which is, I think, unfortunate. A lot of people don't seem to really realize that. You are created in the very image of God. We have his personality, his intellect. There has always been an enemy or a serpent or the devil who has tried to come and deceive people and make you feel separated from your heavenly father or make you question your purpose and why you're here. Remember when the enemy went to Eve and said, is that really what God said? Is that really who you are? Is that really who he is? And so he's still busy at that today, isn't he? And so when I talked about Adam and Eve, what I mean is Cain killed his brother Abel. And it was jealousy. It was, um, again, upset about the, that Abel, really, his relationship and his heart with the Lord. And so I see there's, when what I was saying is when we were made in God's image, he gave us our own will, our own choice. He didn't make us puppets. We were created to fellowship and worship him worship with him, isn't that what, as a normal family thing to do, come together? Um, you know, when we had our children, uh, they were little, I'm um, talking about, you know, from newborn to 18, we would eat together as a family at the table, or we would do things together as a family. That's normal. So what I'm trying to help you see is God, our Heavenly Father, that's how it is meant to be, that we fellowship with him. And uh, the way I was raised in a very religious setting is God is way up there, and he's always mad at you, and that's why he sends lightning bolts to strike you on the head. <laughs> but see, that's, that's a lie of the enemy, isn't it? Again, the enemy is always trying to make you feel um, separated, distance, 
And it's just, it's a deceiving, it's a lie. And so we, you see people now, um, it's just amazing to me how many people are confused or trying to have the right to say who or what they are. I was trying to think, oh, recently I was summoned to do jury duty. And I had all these thoughts about, I'm, we really do believe in American freedom, so I had to get after myself. <laughs> I had some thoughts about how easy it would be to get out of it. I feel pretty good. <laughs> I mean, you know, but what was surprising, and so I mean, I filled it out and ev everything, I did all that, but what was surprising to me, I was, I thought this was really interesting. They had a spot that had the boxes for female, um, male, and an X. <laughs> out of the wisdom and mouths of babes. Thank you, Ziva, you're awesome. Yeah, exactly. She said, what does that mean? Because if you didn't know, here in the state of Colorado, um, about a month ago, there was about 169 new laws that were passed, even though we don't know about them. We weren't voting on them. But one of them is you can't make or tell someone that they have to say what they are, what gender they are. <laughs> yeah. So I thought this was interesting on a government document. It was already on there, all these different boxes to check. So my point is, um, again, there's an enemy who's trying to deceive people and separate them from God's plan and that people don't really understand you are made in the very image of God, which makes you a very special, unique, the Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made and that our soul knows right well. So to me, people who fight against the amazing plan that God has, really in your soul, you are troubled, you are confused, you are bitter, you are upset, and you want everyone else to be upset because your soul knows right well. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can try and say something, but your soul knows what you are. And um, so you can try and demand your own way. Now, in my day when um, children were being raised, so I'm, I'm from a family of, uh, there was five of us kids, if any of us demanded our own way, you got spanked. <laughs> there's a lot of people wanting to do crazy stuff and upset if, if there's someone who says, you're acting crazy, would you shape up? And you're the wrong one. And so, you know, it's just kind of interesting. But to say all that, you know, I will not be shaken. I'm just thinking about, I think my point with all this is every generation has had some interesting things to deal with. But what's really magnified now is with s technology and social media, it just seems to just blast, doesn't it? And, um, you know, you can finally feel calm about something and then just something else is blasted. And it's just, and really what the Lord was showing me, there's more people who really understand God's goodness, more people who really do um, understand right and wrong than the other. I think right now there's something happening where they're trying to make you feel like you're the minority, that you and God, hello, God Almighty, who sits in the heavens and laughs, they're, thank you. They're trying to make, they're trying to make God and all, everyone who loves him, God's family, the minority, where really they are, but they're just using the social media as a mega. Megaform, did I? Yeah, megaphone to really magnify it and blow it up. And on the good point, what I want to say with, with that, every time the enemy twists something, well, guess what? We have all those tools available to us to magnify God and get the word out, get his word, get the good word, the good news. All of us have good news to share and the truth. And that's what we need to continue to share. And right now, th what they're trying to do is uh, the enemy. Yeah, let's just say what it really is. I'm not going to be pitted. I refuse to be pitted against people. I will love them. I will understand them. And I was talking to some family today. Um, I mean, my husband and my son here on campus. And I said, it's really, I said, the thing you need to know, some people truly are living in absolute fear right now. And rather than try and convince them, I just try to understand and pray for them to know that they can grow in knowledge and, and we can keep doing our part to share the truth and use this platform of social media to share the truth and come together and share the truth, empower you to share the truth. But the same point, when I'm in walking in my neighborhood or in a store, and you can tell by people's body language, they really think you're 
got cooties, it's I'm okay to give them six feet if it will help their day go better. You know, it's it's okay. So, you know, I don't I don't have to um worry if everyone just isn't thinking just like me. I can pray for them and just really understand that they really truly are full of fear. And I don't have to take that personal. This is all helping you. We, I just refuse to follow this narrative that we're against each other and I'm going to be pitted against you because you just don't think like me. It's like, I'm going to love you and I'm going to pray for you. And I had something interesting. I do do a lot of walking, but I had done more swimming in the summer because why not? Summer here is seasonal. I think we all understand that. And I thought, I'm just going to do more, um, more swimming. So one afternoon, I thought, I'm just going to go. For, I really just felt like I was supposed to go for a walk, and I was supposed to go here. I really felt directed by the Holy Ghost. Now go here. Go down this street. And anyway, this one woman who I used to see a lot, she had a dog. We all know dogs, you know, um, come to an end. And so her dog had to be um, put down. And so we just hadn't seen each other because that's kind of what brought her out in the morning but God had me walk in the afternoon, and she was taking care of a friend's dog. Uh, this is just a funny little story. There's a whole point in all this. But she was like, she just waved, and she's like, I haven't seen you for so long. And I was just thinking, and I, I told her I've invited her to church. I, you know, I've invited her. I gave her a card, so she has, I gave her information how to find me. But she's like, I was just thinking, I haven't seen that really nice person in a long time. And she's like, thank you for hel helping my day go better. What I'm saying is we really are a bright, shining light. And I mean, and I can tell by things this person has said, they're not on, we're not really on the same page. But we really are light bearers in this crazy, dark world. And we really do take peace. You know, Jesus is in the inside of us. And so Jesus reigns in my life, so wherever I walk, the street is raining with his glory, and it affects people. Does all this make sense? So I, I'm, I'm not going to fall for this division and being mad. And yes, there is a time, we, you all know, we believe in standing up for freedom. I've told all my kids, I want my grandkids to grow up in a free country. So we will continue to stand, and we will stand for God's word. And his word says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together so the doors will be open. But at the same time... I, it, you can't understand some people really are full of fear. And so I'm just thinking, why, why am I not falling for that? In other words, I don't wake up feeling like the world is falling out from under me. It's just like I still have peace. I have assurance. And so that's what I want to talk about is stand on the truth. We better get into this. I hope all this is making sense. Um, I just see some people, and it's just like, you know, what you hear, you hear the comment, you know, bless their little heart. And, and um, even, even whether it's um, what's con considered conservative news or even other ministries, if it's just a constant blast of negative stuff, I turn it off. And I'll tell you that here on point two. But right now we're talking about standing on the truth. And this is Psalms 112, verse 7. Remember we already talked about God is our refuge, strength, help, present help in trouble. I'm not going to fear even though the mountains be moved away. I mean, we've seen earthquakes. We've seen tsunamis, we've seen all this stuff. And I basically believe the whole earth is groaning for his return. But I like what it says in Psalm 112, verse 7, he will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. So I don't have to fall for evil tidings. Does it mean I, I'm not aware of what's going on? I'm aware for us to, when we did open back up, we were aware, of, we wanted to make sure, it's like we had evangelist Greg Fritz here not too long ago, and he's like, we all wanted to make sure that people were safe, we're not stupid. There's, there's things you, you need to understand, but basically, just think of this, I'm not afraid of evil tidings because my heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord. So no matter what's going on, I know that the blood of Jesus has covered me, I know that he, his covenant is with me. It's mine. It's already been purchased. It's already been bought. I don't have to fall apart every time I hear a bad report. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's just like every day it's something new. And, you know, anyway. So I, I don't have to be afraid of evil tidings. Again, because I have that peace of God. I've, I've read the Bible. I know what his promises are. 
And no matter what, whether it's a, a natural thing or I really believe this is a man-made mess, and I think everyone would agree right now. And, um, you know, germ warfare has been going on for years, but hallelujah, I'm protected from that as well. I'm protected from everything because God knew I would live now, and so I have everything. My body has everything I need to live now. So I don't have to regret and think, well, why couldn't I live 50 years ago? Why, can't I, why do I live now? Because God knew I would be here now, and I'm excited to live here now, and he's equipped me with everything I need to be able to live here now. I'm protected. And um, so anyway, not afraid of evil tidings. I don't know if you've ever heard bad news, and maybe it kind of, you know, whether it's a bad report with your finances, bad report with your health, or just bad report, um, you know, what they call what, fake news. Or, you know, really, if it's not really going with the Word of God, it really is fake news. Because the Bible says that we are more than a conqueror. And when you study that out, it says an invincible champion. Well, what does that look like? We're going to be talking about that too. Look at Psalm um, 89, 34. We're going to be studying a lot in Psalm, and then we have a couple other things I want to share with you. These are just very encouraging, and it's just good to go over them together because, again, there's so much other information saying contrary to God's word. Like to say not to pick a gender. Well, here again, we know in the scripture, we're made in his image and he made male and female. It's even in, in vegetation. It's in everything that's created with animals. Can you imagine at the zoo if they start saying, you know, you know because they name the giraffes or whatever, but they start naming the animals X. Because even the zoo animals are demanding that they don't say what gender they are. That's all you could do is laugh about it. And so we just see a lot of things trying to be contrary to God's truth. And anyway, we're not going to, there's so much more you could say there. Did we get to Psalm 89, 34 yet? Okay. I like this. Again, it says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. So my covenant I will not break. Again, we always go to the truth, and the truth is God's word. And what he's saying, my covenant's not going to break. I'm not going to alter it. It is what it is. It's what it says it is. So there's no complications. There's no, nothing confusing here. His covenant is, is good for us. But people have to get that, I, that understanding that he is our heavenly father. And what do good fathers do for their children? They provide everything. But then you still have to choose the good path, right? Does this all make sense so far? So I like that. I, don't, I have covenants there for you, and I'm, I'm not breaking them. They're right there for you. And let's just look at Psalm 107. We don't have to go very far. This makes it pretty easy. So in Psalm 107, verse 29, some of these have a lot of scriptures. It says, he calms the storm so that its waves are still. Isn't that neat? He calms the storms. So no matter what happens, I, I, that's what I, I feel in here is that God is with us and he's going to calm things. It's all going to be okay. And how, does it, how do we get those, those waves and those storms calm? When we go back to the word and what does the word say about that? Again, whether it's, it's for healing, whether it's for joy, you know, it's, it's in your soul and your heart, what's happened there. Um, you know, for your finances, what is God, what does my heavenly father say? What is his plan for me? And we know that his plan is for us good. We also know that we are all here on a sin fallen world, right? So there are times when you, you have to trust and believe God. Is all this making sense? But I can go to him with every fear, every care, every problem and know that there is a promise, that there is a covenant and he's going to show me, he's going to help me. He's going to help me get from A to B. I'm not just stuck. Everyone knows here you're never just stuck, right? He's going to help me. I can pray for my family. I can pray for my, um, you know, friends. And so, um, again, let's turn to this one everyone's familiar with too. But these are just really scriptures to help you, encourage you today. But John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But what does it say? Be of good cheer because I've overcome it. So in this world, there's going to be things. And, you know, we've all talked about this. I remember being young and reading the Bible where it said, they'll call good evil and evil good. And you're like, how can you do that? That doesn't even make sense. But that's what we're seeing, right? 
parents, you're not supposed to stand up for your kids when they go to school. And parents, you're not supposed to tell them that they're a boy or a girl. And parents, you can't do that. And it's just, oh, give me a break. So let's just take, Connie, let's just take the parent thing out. And us grandmas just go to these <laughs> board meetings and tell them how it is. <laughs> and it's just like, quit picking on the moms and dads and uh, us grandmas. Watch out, people. Like, watch out for the grandmas and the grandpas. You know, it's just like, give me a break. Do you all really think we're that stupid? And so um, <laughs> it's like unleashing the grandparents, you know. It's just, um, it's just interesting. And so I really like, I don't know, um, was anyone able to be here at church last night with Pastor Aaron? Yeah, Charlene. Oh, some of you were here. And the good news is uh, you can always live stream that or go back. But in saying this, um, Pastor Aaron had a message that really got me thinking, and we're going to look at one of these scriptures. But he talked about give us this day. And he talked about, you know, and I believe it was in Matthew, give us this day our daily bread. But then he talked about how Jesus broke the bread or broke his body and, and what that means. And he really brought out the, these things from the Old Testament and the New Testament, what it means when you say, when you think of taking bread, it's nourishment, right? And we know that Jesus broke his body, you know, for our healing and, um, you know, took the curse. But look at this. And, and like I said, this is from last night. And I've read a lot out of Numbers. And this, they might not pop it up. I didn't have it in the notes. So Numbers 14.9. You're probably going to just have to go there. But Numbers 14.9. Remember, we're talking about I will not be shaken, standing on the truth, even when you see a lot of interesting. Like I said, we're not the only generation that has seen adverse circumstances to what we know God has promised us. And so, again, in November's, uh, Numbers 13 and 14, it's talking about when the spies were sent out to spy out the land, and God said, go spy it out to the land I'm giving you, just like we know we have victory. But Aaron brought this out, again, no, um, Numbers 14, 9. It's when only two of them, Joshua and Caleb, came back. So they all saw the same thing. They all s saw um, challenging circumstances. Has anyone here ever had a challenging circumstance? That really didn't, you're like, where does this fit in the Bible? But I like what Joshua and Caleb, they're like, you know, we, we are well able to take the victory that God's given us. So look at me in verse 9 if you have it on your phone or your Bible there. But it says only, this is Joshua and Caleb, but there's like, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. Remember that. Don't fear the people of the land. Do not Fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear. But do you see that? They are our bread. In other words, we are going to experience this victory, and what's going to happen, just like bread nourishes us, it's this, this might look like a hard time or a challenging time, but we are going to win. We are going to be victorious. And that's what th these two spies were saying. This is the land. This is what God has given us. And, and yes, there is going to be um, a fight, but there's going to be a victory. And we already know we're going to win. He's like, their, their protections departed. They're our bread. In other words, we're only going to get stronger in this. And this was just a perfect message for me last night at this time because I just feel like, Wow, it's, you know, I was just talking to my husband. We just, as you all know, together, Karis Christian Center celebrated 20 years. And I'm like, do you ever remember in this entire 20 years where we had one year where it was just so easy? <laughs> <sighs> and I was just thinking, is it ever just going to be easy? And then, you know, Pastor Aaron ministered to that. And I'm like, oh, that's right, I'm strong. Bring it on, bring it on, you know. And it's just like, you have to kind of get that Joshua Caleb attitude again. Like, this is my bread. Yeah. This is my bread. You know, Jesus has already won the fight for us, and he's already done these things. He's already broken his body as our nourishment to live in, in victory. And, yeah, there's going to be giants who taunt and bully. Right now, that's what we really see a lot of people are just taunting. They're really taunting the amazing things that God has planned for people. They're really taunting and trying to come against really God's best. They're trying to come against having a relationship with him, um, coming against the family unit, which to me is coming against God because he is my heavenly father. 
and that you don't have to answer to anyone and you can do what you want. Well, there is God, the Heavenly Father. And I've read the end of the book, and this is where I get really excited because there's going to be a day where every knee will bow and it's not to Mr. Mashed Potato Head in the Oval <laughs> Office. <laughs> there's going to be a day everyone's going to bow and it's going to be bow, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's just really... <laughs> really on the tip of my tongue and it rolled right out. <laughs> but there is going to be a day everyone is going to bow and some of them might be shocked, but I'm kind of excited like, you know, you're all just a bunch of taunting bullies yeah. and we're going to be so happy. And I know God has given us the authority now, like Joshua and Caleb, huh, victory's mine. Yeah. The victory is mine. I know it. I know I'm protected. I know that what's in the Bible is mine and that their protection has departed a long time ago. So they can squawk and squill, but at the end of the day, who eats the squilling pig? That's from a farm. That's a farm mentality. It's like squawk and squill all you want, but it ain't going to last forever. So my point is there's those who are really good at really sounding loud, but Jesus said, I have authority, I'm going to my Father, but I give you the authority. In other words, he already took it, he went on the cross, he broke his body, he took stripes, he bled, we all know that, he did that for us, and he's like, now you have authority. You have authority to tread over serpents. And when I think of that, I'm, I'm not thinking of actual snakes, I'm thinking of the devil and people who um, allow him or invite him into their life. Some of them, you can see, can't you, when you see these people talk and give interviews, it's like they come across to me as someone just possessed by the devil. They don't talk in their right mind, and it's just like they have just given themselves over, and it's just, it's just crazy. And uh, so I, I hope this is all making sense to you. But anyway, I'm not going to be shaken because I'm standing on the truth, I'm understanding that for every, everything I come to, whatever trial or, or fight or whatever, ultimately that is my bread. I'm going to be victorious, and this is going to make me stronger because I'm going to remember everything that God has done for me. I'm going to remember when he healed me. I'm going to remember when he protected us, when we did open the doors and the media came to smear us or this happened or that happened, and God's like, no, you are you did what I said, and God is faithful, and when we obey him and move in him, it says in Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. In other words, as we follow his plan, there is protection, and he is with us. Does all this make sense? And so I don't need to be shaken, even though things might look bad. Um, you know, I, I know that I'm victorious. And that, it, like I said, again, um, John 16, in this world, you will have tribulation, so don't be shocked but at the end of the day, I understand you can be of good cheer because we're the overcomers. It's just like Joshua and Caleb. They saw everything everyone else did, and everyone was, like, wanting to go back to Egypt, go back to bondage. Does anyone here ever want to go backwards? Personally, I feel like it's a lot easier to work, walk frontwards than if you walk backwards. You're going to stumble and get hurt. But going frontwards, and this is another thing I noticed. You know, we're talking about I will not be shaken. The other day it was super windy. Does any, everyone remember just the other day when we had that wind that was 50, 60 miles per hour? Well, I went walking and I passed a, a body of water where geese were. And it was really interesting even looking at, you know, animals in the natural. Like what, what do you think these geese were doing when this wind was just howling and they're out on the water? They were pointing right towards the wind. They were pointing right at it, still just looking pretty happy as the waves were bouncing them around, but they were just pointed right in the direction of the wind. So I told my husband this because he grew up in the country and he knows all about animals. Because if I call something a duck, it's a mallard. If I call something a mallard, it's a drake and, you know. <laughs> so I thought, I can't wait to get home and talk to Pastor Honey about this. Like, did you know this is what geese do? And of course he did. But he's like, he's like, it's because it blows their feathers back. So my point is, if you don't want to be ruffled, when there's a storm, you march forward, and it's really going to be a good thing for you. I'm like, if that's what geese do, women, it's going to be a good thing for me. And um, they didn't look worried. They were just out there and pointed forward. And that's how I'm, the only way for the body of Christ to go is forward. 
and know that he is with us so I don't have to um, live like my world is shaking. And so that was stand on the truth. The next thing I want to go to is know the truth. So know the truth. So let's turn to um, Psalm 25. We're going to look at this, and I've, I've read this before, but this is Psalm 25, verse 12, know truth. So first, stand on truth, know it. So if you want to stand on truth, we're going to have to go to God's word and see what the truth is. But I like what it says in Psalm 25, 12. It says, who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he, he chooses. And I like this. When you study this out, it means God will teach us how to choose the best. So God will teach us how to choose the best. Isn't that good news? He's going to teach me because I don't know, has anyone ever woke up or just said, help me God, help me Jesus? And I like it. He says, I'm going to help you choose the best, you know, for you, for your family, in your business or whatever. He's like, I'm going to help you. Again, that's what a heavenly father does, right? He helps us so we can go to him and know that he's going to give us the wisdom for whatever area, whatever area, just spend time with him, and he's going to, you're going to have peace. And this is what a minister told us years ago, because people are like, well, how do I hear? How do I know? Well, follow after peace. You know, sometimes you start one way, and it's like, well, now I need to make a little bit of an adjustment here. But we start, and he adjusts us as we go. Isn't that good? So know the truth. He will teach us. Look, let's look at Psalm 40, verse 5. Again, what I'm really trying to bring out is that you understand how much God loves you. There is a God. We are created in his image. He loves us so much. In Psalm uh, chapter 40, verse 5, it says, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. That's how much God thinks of each one of you. You can't even count how many times he's thinking of you. You know, we think of our family or our friends or our children or our grandchildren, how many times a day we think about them and pray for them. And I know, Joy, you're here. You get to be here. Joy is a, an awesome school teacher. I know she thinks about her students. But God's like, I think about you so much, you can't even count how many times. And see, this is good information for us to have because did anyone ever have a day where you felt lonely? So I'm just being honest. That's a, that's a deceiving thought. You are not lonely. You are not alone. God is with you wherever you go. You're not alone, and he is thinking about you so much you can't even number it. So go ahead and turn to the person next to you and say, you are loved more than you know. You than you know. Yeah, that's awesome. So God has good things for us, whether you lived when it was Joshua and Caleb and the giants or David and the Philistine Goliath, or you live now and there's giants, giants in the land who just make a lot of racket. <laughs> a lot of racket. It's just a lot of racket. Everyone just go ahead and say what it really is. It's just racket. It's, racket. it's just racket. And again, what do grandmas do, Connie, when there's racket? You stop it and you shut it up. It's just like, so what shuts up racket? The truth. We keep being bearers of the truth. We keep being bearers of the truth. We keep shining our light. We keep shining our light. Nothing's going to make my light go out. Nothing's going to make the smile go off my face because I know the truth and I'm going to stand on the truth. And so hallelujah. And I like what it says in Psalm 92, uh, 12 through 15. And this is, we also share this um, for Flourish in Psalm 1-3. And again, in Psalm chapter 1, it talks about this, but it repeats it more than once. So this is Psalm 92, 12 through 15. It says, the righteous shall, shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall what? flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. In other words, we don't dry up in drought to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. But notice it says that we are going to grow, that we are going to flourish because of God and his word in us. No matter what, it doesn't matter what generation or what time you live or what's going on, that this is his word and I'm going to flourish. And, it's, and we're going to bear fruit isn't this awesome? So I hope you're getting as encouraged as me. And this is what I briefly um, talked about. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15. And uh, this is verse 33. And I would mentioned this on a, 
a Sunday about hearing a minister share on this. Again, this is 1 Corinthians. We're talking about knowing the truth. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. So um, it might say evil communications um, in some of your translations. And I thought this was really interesting. I had um, heard a minister quote this, and I had always thought it was talking about, you know, really who you hang out with or um, like what they do and how that can really corrupt you. But they brought it out, even it's what you spend so much time listening to. And, you know, if you're listening to so many things that just fill you with fear, that's going to corrupt the word of God in you. Does that make sense? So we have to be really careful, like, what we are allowing in us 24-7. And you may say, well, that is the truth. Well, God's word is the truth. And so you have to even really guard or take time to unplug from just that constant barrage of the evil report and the dread and the fear. Um, um, recently, I had I talked to a, a Denver uh, or a doctor who was up in Denver and happens to be a Christian. And um, just talking to them, I, I said, you know, um, what our church was doing when we open and to stay open, I said, people need people. And she's like, you're right, people need people. Because there's still um, situations when people go to the hospital, they're put in isolation and they, they can't leave the room. Remember years ago, it'd be like they'd get, up, get you up and walk to help you recover. These people are just put there. So their, their muscles just turn to mush, and I mean, they're isolated. No family can be there. No one can be there. And, um, and I said, you know, what I have found in all this as pastors, people need people. And I made the comment. I said, we know more people who have lost life uh, by choice of suicide than actual a disease or COVID. And it's because there's been so much dread, so much fear, that have just caused people, if they were kind of on the borderline. Isn't that something? And so when I now, as this minister shared on this, I thought that's really true. Like evil communications corrupt good manners. We want to be people of a strong faith. We want to have a strong foundation under us. And that's going to take reading the Bible and getting the truth that no matter what, his word says he's with me wherever I go. His word is a shield and buckler. He is my refuge. He will help me get that um, peace in. I think we've all worked hard and know what it means to get worn out. If Whether you're in the workforce or whether um, I can totally relate, raising a family, raising three little boys. Hello, do you think there's a few times I was tired? Maybe just a few. <laughs> there's a lot of, lot of energy. And so, but I like that God's word says that we can go to him and, and he is our, our place of refuge and our place of peace. And um, hallelujah. And, you know, and I, like I said, again, I don't like how everything that's being communicated right now tries to bring the vision. But let's look at one more thing here in Joshua 1. This is know the truth. We just talked about evil communications. Like, just don't go there. At some point, you might have to just unplug. Um, I've seen people do this when maybe they get a negative report about their health and they're like, research it out to the, the point, like, why don't you research it out what the Bible says? I mean, we do need to be smart, but let's, let's see what the Bible says. And so, again, we're talking about stand on truth, know the truth, and this is Joshua 1.8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it. How many times? Day and night. Day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. In other words, if you want to be prosperous and you want to have success, this is what you need to meditate on. And, um, and then I, I want you to go ahead and look at verse 9. I like this. Um, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I keep quoting that over and over, that he is with us wherever you go. But when it says, don't be afraid, nor be dismayed, in other words, you are to abandon discouragement. You need to abandon discouragement. Isn't that awesome? He's, so when it's talking about dismayed is don't be discouraged. Interesting, isn't it? He's saying, so this is how you come to that place is you get so full of the word of God that you know he's with us. And in saying that, because, um, again, we all have family and friends and the whole 
the whole point of what I see, they're trying to, to me, the secular cu culture right now is trying to divide people. And so, you know, people are like, well, you can't be around me if you don't do this, this, and this, and this. And I finally told someone, I'm like, well, this is who I am. I'm a grandma, and I believe in freedoms, and this is how it's going to be. And if you don't want to be around me, that's okay. I know we're all saved, and we will live forever together in heaven. So, you know, it's just coming to a peace, like I'm not going to be manipulated. I'm not going to have people make me feel bad or whatever. I believe in the word, and this is who I am, and um, I'm okay with it. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna make my world shake. Um, I have peace. I know for everyone who has called on the name of the Lord, we'll live forever together in heaven. But right now, I am refuse to buy into this division. If you don't think just like me, if you don't act just like me, if you don't do just like me, I'm gonna make my decisions because I'm a grandma and I'm a smart one. <laughs> and it's just like if you can't handle it, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to just fall apart every day just because somebody else is. Does that make sense to everyone? It's, it's all okay. We can walk in love, but I can't fall apart. That just falling apart every day just doesn't work for me. So Psalm 26, 7. You could probably tell the kind of parents I had, like, <laughs> there's excuses where the procrastination was just never allowed. So whatever. <laughs> so Psalm 26, 7. Now we're talking about speaking the truth. So we need to stand on the truth, know the truth, speak the truth, and we've got to wrap this up. Psalm 26, 7 says that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. So I can proclaim with a voice of thanksgiving everything that God has done for me. There's so many good things to talk about. There's so many good things and good news to declare. So why not take our time and breath to declare all the good things that God has done? It's exciting and all his wondrous works. Hallelujah. And Psalm 91, 6. Let's turn to this. Like I said, we have a lot. I'm trying to wrap it up. All of a sudden, the time really, really um, zoomed by here. Psalm 91, 6 tells us this. Um, oh, let me see. I want to get to the right one. I don't think, oh, 16, I'm sorry. It's, they probably had it right up there. Psalm 91, 16 says, with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Don't you like that? With long life will I satisfy him. So everyone might have a different understanding of what long life is. So what, what is, what, are you satisfied yet? I'm not satisfied yet. I still have a ways to go. So the good news, everyone, I'm going to be around for a while. So <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> so, you know, I like that. That's his word. So no matter what report we've been given, I know that I'm going to have a long life, and it's going to be a good one because I'm going to be satisfied with it. So there. No. <laughs> like I said, it's fun when you become a grandma. It's just like I act this way. I'm going to blame it on the grandma thing. It's like. It's like, well, you all will be happy, right? No. <laughs> That's just how it is. Uh, I like this, Romans 10, 13. There's so many good things to share, and the Bible is, is so full of good news. But in Romans 10, 13, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know we've shared that before, but I want you to understand that word saved is talking about salvation, asking Jesus in our heart. But it's talking about all of us being saved from anything, being saved from danger, being saved from an illness, just being saved, or again, having peace that I can literally call on him. When we were um, farming and ranching, there was just a lot of, you know, you're working with large animals, large equipment, and there was just times when you just... The all you have time to do is just call out Jesus. And there are so many times that he intervened on our behalf. And like I said, we can call on him at any time, and we know that we will be saved. And um, let's go to 1 John 5, 4, and they'll have that up on your screen. I love this. This is one of my favorite um, scriptures here. So again, 1 John 5.4, it says, for whatever is born of God, I love this, what is defeated? Victorious. Is victorious. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is a victory that has overcome the world, what? Our faith. Isn't that exciting? I love that. It's our faith that overcomes all these things. And I'm just going to conclude with this. I should have had you keep your finger in Psalm, but this is the last scripture today, I promise. There was one Sunday where my husband said that seven times. 
Not that I counted on the front row, but I said, you said it seven times. This was your last scripture. <laughs> so this is my last scripture. <laughs> this is Psalm 4610, and they probably already have it up there on the screen, but I like this. So just in conclusion of standing on the truth, no truth, speak the truth. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. But it talks about be still and know that I'm God. That's really talking about having that understanding that he has already won the victory. That we can be still and rest in knowing that we are already victorious. Isn't that good news? That the work has already been done. Hallelujah. It's kind of like when someone does all the shopping, but you get all the credit. I've heard friends do this before. Like you let the children like buy for the grandkids and then just give them some money. I think it's a good idea. But anyway, I like that. You know, just be still and know that I am God. That in other words, we can just be still and rest. We don't have to live like the world is shaking under our feet. And hallelujah. So that's just a, a good word. So praise God. So let's just um, close in prayer today. So dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you for your word that we've received it, that we can come to you in, in a time of trouble and receive the peace and, and know that you are our refuge, that your word is our shield and buckler, that you do surround us and cover us. As it says in, in 91, that we can go underneath your wings of protection, Lord God, that you are good to us, that you are giving us wisdom what to do and how to do it. And um, Lord, that we just know that we can rise in boldness, that we are the overcomers. And it's our faith, hallelujah, that overcomes in this world. And we just thank you for everything that Jesus has done. He's already broken his body for us. And we just praise you and thank you. And I just thank you that every need is met here on campus and online. Pain has to go. Disease has to go. Um, that your word is truth. And, and hallelujah, Lord, that we are all leaving here and shining our lights bright. That we take peace with us wherever we go. And we take a message of hope. In the name of Jesus, we all said, Amen. Well, hallelujah. God is good. And have a great day. And just go ahead and pray for one another at your tables and come back next week because it is going to be awesome. So, hallelujah. God is good. And go ahead and say all the time.